Hi, this is Roger Green, host of the Surfing the Nash Tsunami podcast. This weekend, we're offering five conversations from Episode 7, our review of the new AASLD NAFLD practice guidelines with Ken Cousy. Plus, from the vault, conversation 59.3 from Season 2, in which we discussed a then-recent article from Jeff Lazarus and Jorn Schottenberg titled Advancing the Global Health Agenda for NAFLD. I start this final conversation on AASLD's new practice guidance by previewing our new podcast series titled The Nash Tsunami and Diabetes, Getting Head of the rising tide. I note that this podcast will target the frontline treaters of patients living with type 2 diabetes and obesity that are so pivotally involved in what this guidance hopes to achieve. After the group shares its excitement around the upcoming series, and I advocate for healthcare companies to join us as sponsors and advertisers, conversation shifts back toward practice guidance itself. Louise Campbell notes approvingly of the array of considerations and diseases covered, including polycystic ovary disease, menopause, testosterone alteration, and thyroid hormones, to name a few. She goes on to describe it as, and I quote, one of the best written guidance documents I think I've ever read, end of quote. Jorn Schottenberg adds his appreciation for the inclusion of some high-level hepatology concepts around histology and cell ballooning. And I compare the entire document to the new generation of hardcover suitcases that can appear sleek and compact on the outside, while in fact being stuffed full of important and neatly organized material, whether clothing or data. In the end, my final question to the group focuses on the greatest practical impact of this guidance in the next couple of years. Surf on to discover their thought-provoking final insights. These new practice guidelines represent one more positive step in the ongoing process of creating standards for how to diagnose and treat patients living with NAFLD and NASH. This episode explores the next major publication in the ongoing stream of new information and education, and an important one at that. So, sit back, listen, enjoy, learn, and when you're done, join the dialogue on our LinkedIn discussion group. I'm going to do something shameless. We've done 160 some episodes of this. We've never talked about what else we do, but I do want to talk about it a little bit now. To me, at least, what this guidance and the various things that have happened does is it takes it passes the baton to the community of how do you educate. It, Ken made the comment before about we want patients to ask their doctors, but for that to work, doctors have to be prepared to answer the question. The challenge now becomes how do you start educating a larger population? Normally, by the time this happens, you've got drugs and therefore you have drug companies and you have extensive spends on education. We're not there yet. We Will be, but we're not yet. One of the steps that we've taken at SurfingNash.com, and I've alluded to this several times, is to start a second podcast with Ken as my co-host called Getting Ahead of the Rising Tide, which is really about the Nash tsunami and diabetes. Uh, we will be running episodes once a month. We will be our first episode with uh, Maz and Nuruddin as our guest comes out next week. But the goal of that program is going to be specifically to create a podcast to speak to frontline providers. I think Louise makes the interesting and important distinction that we're not only talking about doctors here, we're talking about nurses in the U.S. US, from physicians, assistants, and nurse practitioners, but the people who are likely to field the question from the patient that goes, hey, I read this, what, do you, what should I do? Should I be concerned? Our efforts going to be to get those people information and education. And I'm really excited about it, Ken, and I'm thrilled that you're joining me to do it. My shameless plug is that we are looking for support from drug and diagnostic companies, which can take a variety of different forms to help us deliver this message out to the frontline provider community. So if you are interested, if your company is in any way, shape, or form, looking to benefit or looking to simply make sure that patients are better educated and that when patients go and ask doctors questions, the doctors have answers, talk to us. We will work with you on ways to, to make that real in the context of what we're doing in this podcast. It will be similar to what we're doing right now because we're publishing one episode a month and there'll be more details that we'll be putting out through surfingnash.com and to other folks in different settings, but come talk to us. We're pretty excited about this. Jaren Schottenberg. Even as a member of this podcast, I'm very excited about us and uh, you know, having an anchor man like Ken on your site, uh, this is going to be so important. You know, this is not a disease siloed in hepatology. This is a disease that needs to expand across uh, the, the, the realm of metabolic health. And, and, and therefore, I think this is such a useful addition to this podcast. Well, thanks, Jordan. And, and we totally agree. And I've heard Ken described as a hepatoendocrinologist. Um, when I heard that you were presenting at uh, EASD last year, I decided maybe you'll become the first endohepatologist or, or diabetologist. <laughs> and, and, um, and he's Ken Kusi Becoming a, a gastroendocrinologist. But... <laughs> But we won't tell him because he might get a little seizure or something. But uh, yeah, yeah. Ken, I want my PO sticker for my forehead uh, next time we see. Well, <laughs> wait, I have two. I have a GLP-1 one and PIO and maybe some vitamin E2. Just throw it all in. It's good. Although, you know, you're in that sticker wouldn't look good on days you're doing your Matt Damon thing. But other than that, I think it's, got, it's, it's, I think it's really promising. Louise Campbell. I just wanted to add one thing about this guidance, which I thought was beautiful. It was the other conditions done so succinctly 
like polycystic ovary, menopause, testosterone alteration, thyroid, short snippets that when you, if you were a primary care physician reading through, you go, ah, I'd never naturally thought about that. But it was so nicely done. And my Stevenism when I was reading it was keep it simple, stupid. It was succinct. It was nice. It flowed well. It's one of the best written guidance documents I think I've ever read. Hats off to all of the authors and the advisors to be able to do that and do it so nicely. So absolutely beautiful. Just to add to that, it even has some nerdy hepatologist details on hepatology, uh, on histology in it. So, you know, it discusses ballooning and the value of biopsy, like all the nitty gritty details hepatologists tend to talk about all day. So you can get some of that if, you, if you'd like from it, but you don't, you can skip that section too and just break it down to NITs if you want. So I have to confess, as I was reading this document, one of the visual images I had is I decided to buy myself a, a new travel suitcase last year. And I went, looked, started looking at all these hard-sided suitcases with all these packing systems inside them. And one of them, what they did to advertise it was they showed somebody sitting on the suitcase and getting it closed and then it being in perfectly good shape. But there was so much stuff packed in there that you literally had to sit on it to close it. This struck me as that done really elegantly. And you're in, that's exactly what you just touched on. Is It goes all the way from biopsy and histology over to, uh, as Louise, you, you point out, a whole bunch of uh, hormonal diseases. It, it touches everything. And yet the suitcase is really well organized. And you wouldn't know that you had to sit on it to close it. But when you open it, all this stuff pops out. I, I agree. I, I, kudos to Maru and the rest of the team. It's a brilliantly constructed document. We'll have to call her Mary Poppins. It's like the bag and she pulls the aspidist around when she brings that song. That, that's a very different image than sitting on your suitcase to close <laughs> it. I like it a lot better. It's far more elegant. Okay, so closing question to everybody. What do you believe the greatest practical impact of this guidance will wind up being over the next year or two? I actually think this is going to be the one that raises the awareness in primary care. And I think we're knocking on the door. As Ken says, we've now got successive documents coming out. This is readable, it's digestible, and it's implementable. And yes, it does raise some questions, but hopefully those will be questions that you can phone up your local hepatology department and say, can I just clarify the ALT? I've got a couple of questions. I've got a couple of patients. That's always a good conversation for me. On my wish list, and I'm, I'm going to go before Ken because he was so intimately involved in, you know, or more so than I was, let him the last word. But uh, on my wish list, I think I'd like to focus on figure four, which talks talks about the multidisciplinary care models of these patients. And I, I said that the disease does not occur in isolation. We need to talk to each other. In that figure act, the NAFLD patient sits in the middle of the different disciplines that will be able to provide expert care and the hepatologists hopefully will support with novel therapeutics and of course with advanced NITs and in identifying the ones we need to see and the rest of those that do not have severe liver disease, we can give advice and focus on the management of the other comorbidities to provide holistic maybe or more complete care. And I think that's, I see this as a start here and along others, you know, with Kenneth, we've been discussing intensively about multi multidisciplinary care models. So I'm confident this will be taken forward uh, and uh, or in, um, I'd be hoping for this anyways. Well, I have several wish lists. So my wish that list was about 15 years ago that we'll be getting to the point where we are now, that we have a consensus across different fields to screen those at the highest risk, say people with obesity and type 2 diabetes. Moving forward, so now I think we have the basic tools for primary care and the criminologists, obesity management professionals to find the patients. Moving forward, my wish list would be that doing now screening with FIT4 and additional type becomes a reflex in the same way we do it for chronic kidney disease and diabetes. So my second wish list would be that we find a better test in the next five years that could replace FIT4. The, I, I think they're going to laugh us out of the room in the future how basic our screening was. But the point is just to start somewhere. And and third, my third would be that we start treating our people today. Both endocrinologists and hepatologists start using what we got. My fourth one would be more an American dream that our insurance companies pay for structured weight loss programs, pay for bariatric surgery, pay for the medications that our patients deserve. So that would be at the top of my list. And I'm sure I forgot something. And again, that the communication between fields improved, but it's been better than ever before. So, but that it gets better, that the teams develop with more ease. Uh, there's a lot of economic pressures, why it doesn't happen now in the United States and I guess around the world, but that those barriers come down and in the end, it's the patients who will benefit. So um, Ken, I, I think it's really great when a wish list has five items at the top of it, trying to figure out what's below that, but that's fantastic. Man, you have to dream big, Roger. If not, you know, I told you, 
if your dreams become true in a lifetime, you didn't dream big enough. I've always said that, that if in fact you achieve all your dreams, you didn't dream big enough. Absolutely. And, and it's my, Christmas wish list early. But, but the other thing I was thinking is Jordan and I have been hanging out together entirely too long because my, I was going to land on figure four where you landed. And the reason I was going to land there is that the thing that figure four does that's really great is it puts the patient in the middle, right? And when you see figure four, it puts the patient in the middle and it goes in all the different directions that we're talking about here. There's a direction about health and psychology. There's weight management. There's cardiovascular, everything, right? I, I guess Jeff Lazarus was the first guy to say on this podcast, gosh, a year and a half ago, that um, hepatology can't go it alone on this one. This is too big for hepatology. And I think that's right. Now, it says the patient it puts in the middle here is the NAFLD patient. I would just say the metabolic patient, most of whom have NAFLD, but not just that. But if we put the patient in the middle and we get everybody to focus from there, I think we'll do a lot better on every item on your wish list, Ken, and, and, and yours, uh, you are on Louise's as well. We need for the patient to be at the center of everybody. And then when the patient goes out and asks or seeks information or seeks guidance, we need for them to be able to get that in an informed way quickly. That's not a modest wish list either, but it it's okay. We've got we've got time on this, right? Oh, and the last one is that this podcast reaches every corner of the earth. You're my hero, Ken. <laughs> You're my hero. And now back to Roger. We hope you've enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this conversation or the entire episode, please put them in the review section of the page from which you downloaded this conversation or send an email to questions at surfingnash.com. We will be back next week to discuss digital therapeutics and apps and their place in health practices in the U.S., the U.K., and other countries. Until then, stay safe, surf on, and we'll see you on the podcast. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.